Part One, Chapter Two of the Kama Sutra by Vatsyayana. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain and is read by Mark Smith of Simpsonville, South Carolina. The Kama Sutra by Vatsyayana, Part One, Chapter Two, on the acquisition of Dharma, Artha, and Kama. Man, the period of whose life is one hundred years, should practice Dharma, Artha, and Kama at different times, and in such a manner that they may harmonize together and not clash in any way. He should acquire learning in his childhood, in his youth and middle age he should attend to Artha and Kama, and in his old age he should perform Dharma, and thus seek to gain Moksha, i.e., release from further transmigration. Or, on account of the uncertainty of life, he may practice them at times when they are enjoined to be practiced. But one thing is to be noted. He should lead the life of a religious student until he finishes his education. Dharma is obedience to the command of the Shastra or Holy Writ of the Hindus to do certain things, such as the performance of sacrifices, which are not generally done because they do not belong to this world, and produce no visible effect and not to do other things, such as eating meat, which is often done because it belongs to this world, and has visible effects. Dharma should be learnt from the Shruti, holy writ, and from those conversant with it. Artha is the acquisition of arts, land, gold, cattle, wealth, equipages, and friends. It is further the protection of what is acquired, and the increase of what is protected. Artha should be learnt from the king's officers, and from merchants who may be versed in the ways of commerce. Kama is the enjoyment of appropriate objects by the five senses of hearing, feeling, seeing, tasting, and smelling, assisted by the mind, together with the soul. The ingredient in this is a peculiar contact between the organ of sense and its object, and the consciousness of pleasure which arises from that contact is called Kama. Kama is to be learnt from the Kama Sutra, aphorisms on love, and from the practice of citizens. When all the three, Dharma, Artha, and Kama, come together, the former is better than the one which follows it. That is, Dharma is better than Artha, and Artha is better than Kama. But Artha should be always first practiced by the king, for the livelihood of men is to be obtained from it only. Again, Kama being the occupation of public women, they should prefer it to the other two, and these are exceptions to the general rule. Objection 1. Some learned men say that as Dharma is connected with things not belonging to this world, it is appropriately treated of in a book, and so also is Artha, because it is practiced only by the application of proper means and a knowledge of those means can only be obtained by study and from books. But Kama being a thing which is practised even by the brute creation, and which is to be found everywhere, does not want any work on the subject. Answer. This is not so. Sexual intercourse, being a thing dependent on man and woman, requires the application of proper means by them, and those means are to be learnt from the Kama Shastra. The non-application of proper means, which we see in the brute creation, is caused by their being unrestrained, and by the females among them only being fit for sexual intercourse at certain seasons and no more, and by their intercourse not being preceded by thought of any kind. Objection to The Lokayaktika say, Religious ordinances should not be observed, for they bear a future fruit and at the same time it is also doubtful whether they will bear any fruit at all. What foolish person will give away that which is in his own hands into the hands of another? Moreover, it is better to have a pigeon to-day than a peacock to-morrow, and a copper coin which we have the certainty of obtaining is better than a gold coin, the possession of which is doubtful. Footnote. These were certainly materialists who seemed to think that a bird in the hand was worth two in the bush. End of footnote. Answer. It is not so. First Holy Writ, which ordains the practice of Dharma, does not admit of a doubt. Second, 
Sacrifices such as those made for the destruction of enemies, or for the fall of rain, are seen to bear fruit. Third, the sun, moon, stars, planets, and other heavenly bodies appear to work intentionally for the good of the world. Fourth, the existence of this world is effected by the observance of the rules respecting the four classes of men and their four stages of life. Footnote. Among the Hindus, the four classes of men are the Brahmins, or priestly class, the Kshutra, or warlike class, the Vaishya, or agricultural and mercantile class, and the Shudra, or menial class. The four stages of life are the life of a religious student, the life of a householder, the life of a hermit, and the life of a sunyasi or devotee. End of footnote. Fifth, we see that seed is thrown into the ground with the hope of future crops. Vatsyayana is therefore of opinion that the ordinances of religion must be obeyed. Objection 3. Those who believe that destiny is the prime mover of all things say, we should not exert ourselves to acquire wealth, for sometimes it is not acquired, although we strive to get it, while at other times it comes to us of itself without any exertion on our part. Everything is therefore in the power of destiny, who is the lord of gain and loss, of success and defeat, of pleasure and pain. Thus we see the Bali was raised to the throne of Indra by destiny, and was also put down by the same power, and it is destiny only that can reinstate him. Footnote. Bali was a demon who had conquered Indra and gained his throne, and was afterwards overcome by Vishnu at the time of his fifth incarnation. End of footnote. Answer. It is not right to say so. As the acquisition of every object presupposes at all events some exertion on the part of man, the application of proper means may be said to be the cause of gaining all our ends, and this application of proper means being thus necessary, even where a thing is destined to happen, it follows that a person who does nothing will enjoy no happiness. Objection 4. Those who are inclined to think that Artha is the chief object to be obtained argue thus. Pleasures should not be sought for because they are obstacles to the practice of Dharma and Artha, which are both superior to them, and are also disliked by meritorious persons. Pleasures also bring a man into distress, and into contact with low persons. They cause him to commit unrighteous deeds, and produce impurity in him. They make him regardless of the future, and encourage carelessness and levity. And lastly, they cause him to be disbelieved by all, received by none, and despised by everybody, including himself. It is notorious, moreover, that many men who have given themselves up to pleasure alone have been ruined along with their families and relations. Thus King Dandyakya of the Boja dynasty carried off a Brahmin's daughter with evil intent, and was eventually ruined and lost his kingdom. Indra, too, having violated the chastity of Avhalya, was made to suffer for it. Footnote. Dandyakya is said to have abducted from the forest the daughter of a Brahmin named Bhargava, and being cursed by the Brahmin, was buried with his kingdom under a shower of dust. The place was called after his name the Dandyakya Forest, celebrated in the Ramayana, but now unknown. Alhaya was the wife of the sage Gautama. Indra caused her to believe that he was Gautama, and thus enjoyed her. He was cursed by Gautama, and subsequently afflicted with a thousand ulcers on his body. End of footnote. In a like manner, the mighty Kichaka, who tried to seduce Draupadi and Ravana, who attempted to gain over Sita, were punished for their crimes. These and many others fell by reason of their pleasures. Footnote. Kichaka was the brother-in-law of King Virata with whom the Pandavas had taken refuge for one year. Kichaka was killed by Bhima, who assumed the disguise of Draupadi, for this story the Mahabharata should be referred to. The story of Ravana is told in the Ramayana, which with the Mahabharata form the two great epic poems of the Hindus. The latter was written by Vyasya, and the former by Valmiki. 
End of footnote. Answer. This objection cannot be sustained, for pleasures, being as necessary for the existence and well-being of the body as food, are consequently equally required. They are, moreover, the results of Dharma and Artha. Pleasures are, therefore, to be followed with moderation and caution. No one refrains from cooking food because there are beggars to ask for it, or from sowing seed because there are deer to destroy the corn when it is grown up. Thus a man practising Dharma, Artha, and Kama enjoys happiness both in this world and in the world to come. The good perform those actions in which there is no fear as to what is to result from them in the next world, and in which there is no danger to their welfare. Any action which conduces to the practice of Dharma, Artha, and Kama together, or of any two, or even one of them, should be performed, but an action which conduces to the practice of one of them at the expense of the remaining two should not be performed. End of Part 1 Chapter 2